Hello everybody and welcome to Path to Platinum, the series that is so underrated, you're going to question the YouTube algorithm after this one. Today we're going to cover a very exciting new installment to the Dark Souls franchise, Elden Ring. The game everyone and their mothers have been waiting for, myself included. And boy did this game deliver. Now I am super excited to finally be going over this game in my Path to Platinum series. However, before we get into the nitty gritty, if you guys enjoy this video or it helps you out, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course hit that notification bell to support me, and I would really appreciate that. It would mean a lot. Now in some of my footage here, you might see some gameplay with a face cam in the corner every now and then. That's because a lot of the footage I use to make these guides comes from my live streams. I live stream as often as I'm able to here on my channel, so consider stopping by sometime to check it out. Occasionally it's a fun time where shit like this happens. Actually, if I just had someone to summon, I'd be really well off. But of course, I can't fast travel, because apparently I'm in battle. Apparently I'm in combat, guys. Isn't that crazy? Look how much combat I'm in. Surprise, motherfucker. Oh, shit! Well, that would explain it. <laughs> yeah, maybe the army of zombies behind you, Matt. Now, with that out of the way, it's time we finally dive into one of the most highly anticipated games to grace our gaming collections. This is... Elden Ring. So I think the first question most players will be faced with at the beginning of most Souls games is almost always, what class should I choose? Personally, I think with this game in particular, because it can seem so staggeringly difficult from the word go, I think it's best to go with a spellcasting class due to their low risk, high reward gameplay styles. Either the Astrologer or the Confessor are both equally worthy choices, but I would lean more towards the Astrologer as my overall recommendation, as it's definitely more beginner-friendly of the two. But ultimately, the choice is yours. It's your playthrough. Play it how you want to play. I just think these two classes would save new players from a lot of headache. As for a starting gift, I would definitely recommend the Golden Seed as your choice. These are pretty hard to come by throughout the game, and they allow you to upgrade your healing flask and add to your total flask count, which means more heals in the beginning, which is great. Now, before we get started, I think it's fair game to address one simple fact. All the stories and rumors you've heard about how hard this game is, they're all true. To prepare for a real test of your determination and will. Basically, this game has enemies and bosses around every corner that deal so much damage most of the time they can potentially 100 to 0 you at almost any given moment. Now, this becomes much more manageable with time and effort. Basically, a rule of thumb with this game you should follow is if you ever have a significant amount of trouble with a boss, or if you're just struggling in general, then never be afraid to just say fuck it and go find something else to do. This game's map is absolutely massive and for a good reason. There's an absurd amount of things that you can do in this game, so it's never an issue when you want to take a break from the path you're on and go exploring somewhere else. Hell, you might even find an easier time overall and get stronger in the process in order to tackle the harder stuff that you were struggling with before. And this is something that could seriously help newcomers to this game. The game tells you right off the hop to follow the Guidance of Grace, aka the beam of light pointing to a particular direction. However, this should be taken as merely a temporary suggestion, and you should never be afraid to trail off the beaded path. You will eventually have to go in those directions that the light points in order to progress the story, but just know that they are never a priority. And last thing I'll say about this game before we go into any real detail is that this game has highly missable items that you will need in order to platinum, which means if you fuck up particular character side quests, then you could potentially lock yourself out of getting the platinum in one playthrough. Which absolutely blows dickhole when you realize that this game is a trillion hours long and you really don't want to be forced into an additional playthrough. 
One upside if you do happen to miss anything important for a trophy is that these items can be dropped by other players and given to you. This is even true for weapons as long as they haven't been upgraded. So getting trophies can be made easy if you have a friend willing to do that for you. If you happen to be missing one or two things for a trophy, this method could potentially get you out of a shitty situation. It's also worth mentioning that this game has multiple endings, three of which are required for three separate trophies. Now, you could complete all prerequisites for each ending without conflicting with one another. So this means we're going to be exploiting save scumming, which essentially means to back up your save file to the cloud, and we're gonna need to do this if we wanna get all three endings by the end of one playthrough. This is obviously the most efficient and time effective method. So the way this video is gonna play out is I'm going to be starting the game from the beginning and complete all of the setup required to obtain every single trophy in the game in one playthrough. And as long as you're following along with this video as you play, you won't miss any items you need and you will be able to accomplish this as well. However, it's worth noting that if you wanna skip to any bit of information in particular, then feel free to use the timestamp navigation tool in the description to jump ahead to any more specific info that you want. If not, then just sit back, relax, and watch how the young prodigy Matthias works his magic. Now just a quick disclaimer, as of this point forward, the footage you will be viewing will only be gameplay that is strictly related to the progress towards trophies in the game. I'm not going to be showing mandatory boss fights or any optional content that is unrelated to trophies. That being said, if you guys ever want to take a break from earning trophies and go exploring or doing side dungeons, hunting down optional bosses, or whatever the fuck you feel like doing, then feel free to do so. I will only be showing the steps that are absolutely necessary for obtaining all trophies that could be potentially missable. So to that end, let's get started. So as soon as you gain your freedom to explore throughout Limgrave, which is the first big area of the game, I recommend that you make your way to Margit, which is the first real boss the game expects you to confront and defeat. Now chances are that you're gonna seriously struggle with this boss, and that's because you shouldn't really be fighting him this soon. However, we need access to the Round Table Hold, which is the main hub area of the game. You'll be seeing a lot of this place. In order to gain access to it, you'll need to have at least fought Margit before Melina lets you fast travel there. If you lose to Margit and you still don't have access, then just keep fighting him until you do. Eventually, you'll be allowed to travel there. Once you've arrived at the Round Table Hold, feel free to interact and get to know the NPCs in the area. However, there's only one person here at the moment who is very important, and that's Fia, the Deathbed Companion. Make sure you regularly speak with her and receive as many free hugs as your innocent heart desires. Doing this will open up special dialogue with Fia that we need to listen to in order to advance her side quest, which is needed for the Platinum. Now you don't have to spam visit her here and talk to her constantly, but just every few bosses or so, I would recommend checking in on her just to see if she has something new to say. It's just safer to make a habit of it, just to make sure that you don't miss anything. Her questline is semi-strict, but not overly strict. The window of opportunities to progress her side quest are abundant, so don't stress about it too much. Oh, and the game doesn't actually tell you this, but whenever you get hugs from Fia, she actually gives you a debuff that lowers your maximum health. So just be sure to use the Bullican's Blessing that appears in your inventory after hugging her to remove the debuff. She's sweet, but her love comes at a price, boys. Alright, so next order of business, I recommend visiting Sorceress Selen. She can be found in Limgrave Waypoint Ruins, located on the eastern road from where we started the game. Once you beat the boss in this area, you'll be able to talk with her, and she will also ask you if you want to become her apprentice. Say yes. We will need to progress her questline in the future, so we'll be coming back here later. And that's it for now, moving on. Alrighty, next up I recommend that you go south, like way south, all the way to the bottom of the map, and explore this region here. Doing this will be great preparation for not only Margit if you haven't defeated him yet, but more importantly, it'll help prepare you for Godric the Grafted, who is even more menacing than Margit was. Also, the main reason we're going this way is for your first legendary Ashen Remains called Lutel the Headless, which can be found in the Tombsward Catacombs. It will be rewarded to you upon the slaying of the boss here. And of course, we will need to visit Castle Morn at the very bottom of the map, 
Make your way to the very end of this area to encounter the boss, Leonine Misbegotten. Defeating him will reward you with the Grafted Blade Sword, which will be your first legendary armament towards the trophy. Now these are the only two trophy relevant things on this entire side of the map, so feel free to keep exploring any and all locations for more runes and loot on this side of the map before leaving. Next up on Limgrave's Northern Road, you'll find the War Master Shack. There you will find an NPC named Knight Bernal. He will ask you if you're still loyal to the Guidance of Grace or some shit like that. Just say yes. Now this NPC is very special for the reason that he is carrying a legendary armament called the Devourer Scepter that we need in order to platinum and the only way to get it from him is to kill him. Now you will have two opportunities to do this. You can either kill him now once you first meet him, which would be the simplest way to obtain it, or if you want to experience his questline then you can wait to kill him until much later in the game. And by much later I mean the very ass end of the game. If you kill him at the War Master's Shack, you won't be able to enjoy his questline, so the choice is completely yours to make. If you don't choose to kill him now, he will invade you once you reach Pharaoh Missoula, which is the final map of the game. If you kill him here, he will drop the weapon, and it'll most likely be the last one you need for the trophy. Further ahead, down this same road, you will find Summon Water Village Outskirts. Here you will find a rather unique boss named the Tibia Mariner. Defeat this boss and he will drop a unique item called Death Root. Now we're going to need this item to give to a certain NPC in a far off land to the east. Now obviously we don't want to have to run all the way over there, so we're going to use the Sending Gate instead, which will instantly warp us there. Travel to the Third Church of Merica, which will also have some very useful items there, and make your way over to the small pond just northeast of the church itself, and there will be a hidden portal you can take. Once you do, you will arrive at your destination. Make your way inside the bestial sanctum, and for the love of God, do not aggro the enemy directly behind you, and speak with the beast clergyman. Is it clergyman or clergyman? I have no idea. This is the guy who you're going to give your newfound death root to. He will reward you for doing this, however, that's not why we came here. Giving him the death root will trigger an NPC to spawn in the round table hold, simply named D. Now there's a chance you might have met this NPC before doing this, however this method guarantees his arrival to the round table hold if he wasn't there for you already. D will be important later, but for now we just needed him in the round table hold. Now we're going to start making our way through Stormvale Castle. Progress through the level at your own pace until you reach the Rampart Tower. Once you're there, you will be very close to a new NPC we can talk to. Make these drop downs and introduce yourself to Rogier. I have no idea if I'm butchering his name, but that's the best you're going to get out of me. He's friendly enough and he will sell you spells and shit, but more importantly, he will return to the round table hold, which is exactly where we need him. Now, once you've defeated Godric the Grafted, this was around the time that I was able to hear one of Fia's optional conversations. Go see Fia at the round table hold for a hug and see if she talks about Rogier and the Black Knife Print. This will be your first step towards progressing her questline. If she's not offering this dialogue right now, then simply keep progressing the story and keep checking on her until she does. Now we will have access to a new region on the map called Liurnia of the Lakes. This will be the next big area of the game. Follow the road northwest of Stormvale Castle and you will happen upon the Male Factor's Evergal. Now chances are you've seen an Evergal already, and they're quite predictable in the sense that when you enter them, you will always encounter a boss. Now this boss in particular will drop the legendary incantation, Flame of the Fell God. Defeat Adon the Thief of Fire to obtain your first legendary spell. Now we're going to continue following the cliffside northwest until we happen upon a location, Village of Albinorix, hidden on the inside of the mountain. Now this area doesn't take long to comb over. Progress through as you normally would until you encounter this unique enemy. You'll know you got the right guy if you hear him playing the flute as you approach. Take him out, and instead of crossing the bridge directly in front of this enemy, continue along the path behind the houses until you see this lone jar. Go ahead and give it a little love tap to uncover a secret NPC. Proceed to exhaust his dialogue for the right piece of the Halig Tree secret medallion. 
This is the first half of a key item. We will need to access another hidden region of the map much later in the game. Now we're going to backtrack ever so slightly in order to find the Lakeside Crystal Cave. Go ahead and complete this dungeon and make your way to the very end of the path to encounter the NPC, Latena. She will be important later, but for now simply exhaust her dialogue until she disappears. She might not talk to you if you haven't already gotten the first piece of the Halleck Tree Medallion, so if she's being mean to you, then just go ahead and grab that, see the previous step just before this one, and she should be more friendly to you. And that's going to be it for now. Continuing to follow the road northwest will eventually bring you to the site of grace called Foot of the Four Belfries. From here, you will be able to physically see your next destination. Simply run straight down the hill and towards this rocky alcove, until you see a slumbering dragon. Now, you won't see him in my footage because I killed him already and I forgot to record it, but he will be sleeping right on my right side here. Now, you can crouch and sneak up behind him and still have plenty of time before he can react. He won't wake up until you're very close to looting the Academy Glenstone Key, which can be found on the corpse of this mage directly behind the dragon. It's at this point you want to pick up the key, remount up, and gun it out of there. Trust me, you won't be strong enough to fight this dragon yet, so you should avoid him for now. And with key in hand, we can now access the Academy of Raya Lucaria, which can be found smack dab in the center of the lake. You really can't miss it. Proceed through the Academy and defeat Radagon's Red Wolf for a trophy. Once you've done that, head outside and immediately to your right, this will take you down a path leading to your first legendary talisman, the Radagon Icon. So don't forget to go ahead and loot that. And that's going to be the only trophy relevant loot in this entire location. So now we can simply focus on defeating the main boss here, which is going to be Reynala of the Full Moon. Defeating her will be quite useful, as once she's defeated, she will become a friendly NPC that you can talk to, and she will allow you to reallocate all of your skill points that you've spent thus far, which can come in real handy. However, you will need a special item called Larval Tears in order to actually accomplish this. Now that the Academy is completed, we can now continue heading down the Northwestern Road like we have been until we come across Caria Manor, directly north of the Academy. Making your way through the manor, you will eventually reach the rooftops of the area. Once you have, you will now have access to your next legendary armament called the Sword of Night and Flame so you can go ahead and loot that for yourself. Continuing through this area, you will eventually reach a boss that you will have to defeat named Royal Knight Loretta. Once you've done this, you will then be faced with yet another boss fight immediately in the next room. However, you are not expected to defeat this next boss. Simply lower the dragon's health to about halfway, which at that point, it will FO, allowing you access to our next destination. Head to the tower furthest to the left on the map and make your way to the top to meet Rani the Witch. Now, if for whatever reason Rani isn't here for you, that's probably because you advanced too far into Kaelid, which is the region to the east, in which case you will have to defeat Shardbear Radon before Rani will return to her tower. So just take note of that if you're confused and she's not there. Alternatively, if Rani is here, but she keeps telling you to fuck off, then this is probably because you started Roger's questline, so you can simply speak with him again at the round table hold after talking to Rani and then return to her and she should be more welcoming. Rani will ask you to join her as one of her loyal servants. This is very important for one of the endings we need in the game, so say yes for the love of God. She will then tell you to introduce yourself to her three other servants in her employ and you cannot leave this area until you exhaust their dialogue. Now next up we're going to make our way to the Siofra River which can be accessed via this elevator in Eastern Limgrave. There will be a semi-big area that you can explore for lots of goodies. However, the main reason we're here is to hunt down an optional boss named the Ancestor Spirit. Light all eight of the braziers in the area, and I'll be showing an image of where all eight can be located on the screen right now, so go ahead and hunt those down and interact with them. Once you have, you can now access the area that leads to the boss fight itself, Defeat the Ancestor Spirit for a trophy. Alright, so now that we've talked to Rani, and we've progressed her questline, now the next big thing we will have to accomplish will be to defeat Shardbearer Radon, 
who could be found over in the eastern land of Kaelid. Now that should be our main priority, however there's a few things you can do here in this area that are trophy relevant. Now we're going to continue east through Kaelid and eventually you will happen upon this big fella. This is a massive dragon named Grail. Now Grail can't actually move as he will be stuck in his current position. However, we will need to defeat him for a legendary incantation. Now you may notice upon hitting him that his health bar barely drops. Well, the way to make this easier is to defeat the five smaller dragons that are closest to him. Upon defeating each smaller dragon, Grail's overall health will drop, and once he has been defeated, a legendary incantation will become available at the Cathedral of Dragon Communion, which can be found in Southern Caleb. You will need the dragon hearts dropped by the dragons that you've defeated in order to use as currency to purchase the incantation, Grail's Roar, and that's going to be that one. Now located directly behind Grail, whom we had just defeated moments ago, you will find a location named Fort Faroth. Now, it can be rather tricky to find this particular spot in question if you're not being observant. However, there's a legendary talisman located inside this fort called Radagon Sorcy. It can be found shortly after this hidden jump, followed by some rats. Defeat them and the talisman is yours. Okay, now that's going to be everything we can accomplish prior to defeating Shardbearer Radon. So he will be our next primary focus. He can be found the furthest east of Kaled via Redmain Castle. You can walk all the way to the castle, or you could take the Sending Gate, located right next to the Impassable Great Bridge, which will basically teleport you past all the enemies and bring you straight to where you need to be. You will find this room where a bunch of NPCs have gathered around. Speaking to the announcer who makes his speech to all the fighters will give you access to the boss fight itself. Now chances are this boss fight may be incredibly difficult for you. I know I struggled with it by the time I reached this part of the game. That being said, you may have to take the time to explore and complete other dungeons in order to make some money and get stronger. Now once you've defeated Shardbearer Radon, this will be around the time that Fia had her second dialogue option opened up for me, so you might want to check on her as well over at the round table hold. She will give you a unique item called the Weathered Dagger. With dagger in hand, go ahead and talk to the NPC D and give him the dagger when prompted. Doing this and leaving the round table hold and then warping back will trigger the death of the NPC D at the hands of Fia. Exhaust her dialogue and she will leave the round table hold for good. This will advance her quest line, so as foreboding as this seems, it's a good thing because we need it for the platinum. Alright, next up after defeating Radon, there's one thing left we can do before moving on from Kaled, and that will be to make our way to the War Dead Catacombs, which can be found north of the Radon boss fight in the surrounding desert. Defeating the Putrid Tree Spirit in this dungeon will reward you with the legendary Ashen Remains, Redmane Knight Oga. Alright, so now with Radon having been defeated, his death will have triggered access to a brand new dungeon with three new optional bosses that we now have access to. Proceed to the forest in Eastern Limgrave to find a massive crater with rocks floating above it. Chances are you'll have very little trouble finding this place, as this massive crater wasn't here before the boss fight. Once you do, just make your way through a series of drop-downs through the crater until you reach the new area, Nakron Eternal City. Once you have arrived here, it won't take long for you to reach the first optional boss of the area, called the Mimic Tier. Go ahead and defeat it for a trophy. Once that boss is out of the way, you will now have access to more of the area itself. You will also notice there are more braziers you can light around in the area. Once again, same as before, there are 8 braziers, and if you find and light them all, you will have access to the second optional boss of the area, the Regal Ancestor Spirit. I'll be showing an image on the screen right now revealing the location of the boss itself as well as the braziers that are needed to challenge it. Defeat this boss for yet another trophy. Lastly, you could find the optional boss Valiant Gargoyle towards the very end of this area. Defeating this boss will reward you with another trophy as well as a very important fast travel mechanic. After the boss fight towards the back waterfall, you will find this lone coffin. If you hop in, it'll transport you to Deep Root Depths. This area will be very important later, however, we're not going to explore it just yet. So grab the Site of Grace in this location, and go ahead and warp back to Nakron for now. From the Ancestral Woods Site of Grace, turn so that you're facing the cliffside, and drop down to the nearby rooftop. 
From there, follow the path until you reach a fog door that requires a stone sword key to open. Go ahead and make your way inside and loot the legendary Ashen Remains Mimic Tier, which also happens to be the best Ashen Remains in the entire game. Keep making your way further down into the area until eventually you will reach the very end and you will find a chest containing a key item, the Finger Slayer Blade, which we will need to advance Randy's questline. So now with the Finger Slayer Blade in hand, we can now return to Rani and proceed to exhaust her dialogue. Doing so will grant you the Carrion Inverted Statue. Once you've obtained this item, you can now make your way over to the Divine Tower of Liurnia. It's here that you can approach the altar in the very first room and use the Carrion Inverted Statue. This will flip the entire layout of the tower, which in turn will also grant you access to the prize at the very top of the Divine Tower. Go ahead and loot the Curse Mark of Death from the corpse you find at the very end. This item will be important later. Rani will then disappear from her tower. This will also cause the third tower in the area, that was normally locked, to now be open and accessible. Make your way over to Rena's Rise and use the sending gate at the top of the tower. This sending gate will transport you to the Einzel River Main, which is the next area we need to be in. As soon as you arrive, you will find a miniature Rani doll inside of a coffin directly ahead of you. After picking up this doll, you can rest at the nearby Site of Grace, and you will be given the option to speak to the doll. At first, the doll won't respond, however, if you just keep spamming talk, she will respond eventually. Keep talking to Rani and exhausting her dialogue until she has nothing new left to say. She will then ask you to slay a particular target, whom you will run into later, but for now, don't worry about it, and proceed to move on. There will be an optional boss deeper into this area, called the Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella. He could be located on the western side of the Einzel River main from where you started. Defeat him for yet another trophy. Continuing through Noxtella Eternal City, you can make your way all the way up several flights of stairs until you reach the very top of the city. You will find a treasure chest guarded by a couple of Mimic Tears. Inside this chest you will find your next legendary talisman, the Moon of Noxtella. And at the very end of Noxtella Eternal City, furthest to the left on the map, you will find an elevator which will take you to your next target. You will run into an NPC invader named the Baleful Shadow. This will be the target Rani wanted you to hunt down and kill. Defeating it will reward you with the discarded palace key. With this key, you will be able to return to Reynala at the Academy of Raya Lucaria. There will be a locked chest next to Reynala that can now be opened using this key. Opening the chest will reward you with the Dark Moon Ring, which is needed for Rani's questline. Now that we've accomplished that, we will have to return to where we defeated the Baleful Shadow that gave us the key, and continue forward through the Lake of Rot. Once you've reached the very end of the lake, you will find yet another coffin that will transport you to your next location, and to a very important boss battle. Make your way forward and challenge the optional boss, Estelle Natural Born of the Void. Upon defeating this boss, you will now be granted access to the next important location of the map, the Moonlight Altar. This area will have a few important things we need for trophies, however first, we're gonna make our way over to the Cathedral of Manicellus. Make your way dropping down into the pit inside the cathedral, and you will discover Rani once again. Interact with her and exhaust her dialogue. Doing so will not only completely finish her questline, but you will also be rewarded with your next legendary armament, the Dark Moon Greatsword. You will now have completed all prerequisites for the Age of Stars ending, so give yourself a pat on the back for that one. Next up, we're going to make our way over to the Ringleader's Evergal and challenge the boss here, named Electo, Black Knife Ringleader. Defeating this boss will reward you with your next legendary Ashen Remains, Black Knife Tish. And lastly, we're going to make our way over to Kelowna's Rise in the very bottom left of the Moonlight Altar Plateau. Now, the tower will require you to complete a puzzle to hunt down and slay three ghostly tortoises. The first one will be hiding alongside the cliff, right next to the tower itself. Now, the second and third tortoises can be a little glitchy and sometimes not appear in the order they're supposed to. Basically, if the second one isn't here, then go to the third one and vice versa. But yeah, the second one is supposed to appear right here. And lastly, the third tortoise will be slain 
midway up the spirit spring in the top left of the moonlight altar. I only had to kill the two of them and the tower opened up for me, but just be aware that it could be a little glitchy at times. Make your way back to Kelowna's Rise for your next legendary sorcery, Rani's Dark Moon. Alright, so now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, it's just about time we make our way to the Altus Plateau. Now, there are two ways to reach the Altus Plateau. One way is to make your way through the ravine, which can be accessed on the northernmost point of the Lake of Liernia, and head all the way up the cliffside at the very end. At the end of this path, you will reach a boss called Magma Worm Makar. You won't see him in my footage since I've already killed him, but he will be in this room when you get here, for sure. Defeating this boss will net you a trophy, so for the sake of the Platinum, we're just going to focus on this route to the Altus Plateau, and we're going to ignore the other method. Once you've arrived at the Altus Plateau, you're going to want to make getting to the Volcano Manor your focus. Once you've arrived, you will meet Tanith. She is the head of Volcano Manor. She will ask you if you want to join her. I would recommend saying yes, as this allows you to not only have an easier access to the boss Shard Bearer Rykard, but you can also enjoy the fun quest lines that you can experience here at the manor. She will give you a key that will unlock one of the bedrooms in the manor. Inside that bedroom will be an illusory wall that you can roll into in order to reveal. Making your way through this secret passage will bring you to the Volcano Town. Making your way through this area will actually be important for the Platinum, seeing as there's an optional boss here named Godskin Noble, whom you can find and battle once you reach the Temple of Aegle. Defeating him will reward you with a trophy. You won't see this boss in my footage on account of I already killed him, but he will be here when you get here. I promise. Once you finish Tanith's questline in Volcano Manor, she will grant you the ability to challenge Shardbearer Rykard. You can also reach Rykard via portal in Volcano Town, however doing it through the questline is far easier, as well as the path of least resistance. As soon as you enter the boss room with Rykard, you will be able to loot a special weapon before you engage him. This weapon will be the key to defeating Rykard. It fires ranged projectiles that deal significant damage to Rykard. Once you defeat him, you will be rewarded with a trophy for your troubles. And to finish off Volcano Manor and the area surrounding it, you're going to want to make your way all the way around the manor, starting from the bottom of the canyon surrounding the manor, and head towards the southern side of the castle. Eventually, you will reach a strange NPC who won't actually interact with you. However, upon clicking on him, he will simply hand you your next legendary sorcery, Comet Azure. Once you have obtained this spell, you must now return to an old familiar face. We're going to go back and visit our friend Selen, who we met at the beginning of the game. Turns out that weird gemhead guy who gave us our last legendary sorcery was apparently one of her masters. She will now ask you to help find another of her masters. Make sure you agree to everything she asks of you, and she will give you the key that we need in order to find who we're looking for. Now we're going to make our way to the Celia Highway, which is a secret cave that can be found immediately south of Fort Faroth in Kaelid. You'll have to run alongside the bottom of the cliff, smacking the walls until you find the right one. One of the drop-downs in this area will lead to the sealed door, which is where we're going to use the key Selim gave us. Once you do, you will find the master in question, and he will reward you with the legendary sorcery, Stars of Ruin. And now that we've finished all trophy-relevant content with Selin, she's officially useless! That being said, we can now return to Redmain Castle and speak with the announcer from the festival once again. Turns out this guy is a witch hunter. And if we had spoke with him sooner after Radon was killed, he would have left Redmain Castle to go hunt down Selin and kill her. Which obviously we couldn't have, because we still needed spells from her. But now it doesn't matter, so we could talk to him and exhaust his dialogue. Once you do, he will leave Redmain Castle, and a new boss fight will become accessible in the same room where all the NPCs gathered for the festival. Defeating this boss will reward you with your next legendary armament, the Ruin's Greatsword. Now, returning to the Altus Plateau, you can make your way over to the Golden Lineage Evergowl, which will require Stone Sword Keys in order to access. Once you do, you can have a rematch with Godric the Grafted. I don't think he's any harder than the first time around, or maybe he is and I just couldn't tell. Regardless, defeating him will yield the Godfrey Icon, which will be your next legendary talisman. Next, we're going to pay the Shaded Castle a visit over to the north. 
This area is pretty decently big, however, once you reach the very end of the castle, you will encounter the boss, Elamer of the Briar. Defeating this boss will reward you with your next legendary armament, Mariah's Executioner's Sword, so you can go ahead and loot that for yourself. And finally, I do believe that the last trophy-relevant item in the Altus Plateau can be found in the Sainted Hero's Grave. You will have to complete this dungeon and defeat the boss in order to obtain your next legendary Ashen Remains, Ancient Dragon Knight Kristoff. If you get stuck for whatever reason in this dungeon, all you have to do is progress until you see the Onslaught of Guillotines. Make your way up this ladder at the end of the path, and you will encounter a big tough guy enemy in this room. You will have to aggro him and get him to follow you all the way back to the beam of light on the floor. If you run too far away from him, he won't follow you all the way, so just be careful. Once you kill him, that will unlock the door to the boss. Now the enemy that we have to kill in order to unlock the boss door wasn't in my footage because I had already killed him and unfortunately he doesn't respawn. But once you do this, you'll have access to the boss, simply defeat him for your next legendary Ashen Remain. And now to conclude the Altus Plateau, we will be making our way to the Royal Capital. Once you're there, you will eventually see a notable landmark. A giant golden spear protruding from the wall. It's honestly pretty hard to miss this. Once you find it, you will simply need to approach it from above and drop down onto it. It's worth noting that you can only do this once you've defeated Godfrey, the boss in this area. Make your way to the end of the spear sticking out of the wall and loot your next legendary armament, the Bolt of Grand Sax. Now, it's also worth noting that this weapon is highly missable, and you should make it a point to grab this weapon prior to defeating the boss Malekith the Black Blade, because immediately following that boss's death, this weapon becomes unavailable. So you should make it a point to grab this ASAP. Once you've done that, your next step will be to make your way to the subterranean Shunning Grounds, aka the sewers underneath the capital. Making your way all the way to the end of this area, you will eventually encounter the optional boss, Mog the Omen. Go ahead and defeat this boss for yet another trophy. After that, you can reveal a secret path behind this boss room. This will lead to a semi-difficult platforming section, where you will have to consistently and safely drop down as far as you are able to go. I will be showing all the footage necessary in order to better help you accomplish this. Do your best to follow the exact route I take, and you should be okay to make it to the bottom. Runes intact. Once you do make your way to the very bottom of the shaft, you will eventually reach a site of grace as well as a very odd looking door. Do not under any circumstances interact with this door. Doing so will lock you into the frenzied flame ending and you won't be able to get the other endings in one playthrough. Just forget about this door as well as this area for now, and we will return here when we're ready to collect all of the endings. For now, getting the Sight of Grace is enough. We can warp back here when we need to. Alright, so after a lot of main story progress, you will eventually make your way to the mountaintop of Giants. Once you're here, one of the Sights of Grace you will happen upon during the path, following along the path ahead, will be the Freezing Lake. This Site of Grace will be the closest landmark to our next legendary sorcery. Make your way up the hillside closest to the Grace, and you will eventually see a tower on the other side of the chasm. Now, you won't be able to see it, but there's actually an invisible bridge connecting that tower to the other side of the chasm that you can cross in order to reach your next legendary sorcery. Simply follow the directions I take in the footage here, and with a little bit of luck and determination on your part, you will eventually reach the legendary sorcery called Founding Reign of Stars that you can go ahead and loot for yourself. Now, continuing along the pathway leading you further to the north will eventually happen upon the location Castle Soul, which will be the home to our next few important items. The first one is going to be the legendary armament, the Eclipse Shotel which can be found just before you reach the boss of this area, inside the Church of the Eclipse, which is also the closest site of grace next to this item. And finally, once you reach the end of this area, you will encounter the boss named Commander Neol. You will need to defeat him not just for a trophy, but also to be granted access to the next important item we need, which is going to be the left piece of the Halic Tree Medallion, which we can now use to access the secret area of the Halic Tree. 
And now that we have the completed medallion, we can backtrack to the grand lift of rolled that we first used in order to reach the mountaintop of the giants, and simply toggle through the options until you see one to use the Halleck Tree medallion. Once you do this, you will be granted access to the second half of the mountaintop of giants. This will be the western side. Once you've made your way there and you've got your bearings, there will be a new location we can visit called the Cave of the Forlorn, found at the bottom of a frozen ravine. This dungeon will require stone sword keys to enter, so just make sure you have those. Once you reach the end of this dungeon, you will encounter the boss Misbegotten Crusader. Defeating this boss will reward you with your next legendary armament, the Golden Order Greatsword. And if you've been following the guide thus far, that's going to be potentially the final legendary armament you will need in order to get the trophy for legendary armaments. So good job on completing this daunting task. Or if you haven't killed Bernal yet, and you left him alive to do his quest line, then you will get this trophy later on in Faramazula, so just be patient. It's also worth noting that when I gathered all of the legendary armaments, the trophy didn't actually pop. Now, I don't know if this has been patched since then, but if the same thing happens to you, then I was able to get around this glitch by simply placing all of my legendary armaments in storage. Once I did that, the trophy popped without issue, so go ahead and give this a try if this is giving you some trouble as well. Alright, next up you're going to want to make your way to this spot on the map where I've set a waypoint for myself. Once you reach this location, you will find a sending gate there. Use this gate to be granted access to the hidden path that eventually leads you to Mogwin Dynasty Mausoleum. And at the very end of this area, you will encounter the next big boss battle you will be faced with against Shardbearer Mog. Now this boss has a bit of a tricky mechanic that he employs during the battle. Basically, he will proceed to fully fill up your bleed gauge multiple times consecutively. This will cause you to take absurd amounts of damage, and you most likely won't survive the attack. He does this about roughly halfway through the fight. Now, what I would recommend is for you to visit the Second Church of Merica. You can get there via the Altus Highway Junction site of Grace. Once you arrive, you will be invaded by an NPC. Upon killing this NPC, you will be rewarded with the Purifying Crystal Tear, which can be mixed in your Flask of Wondrous Physic. Using this mixture in your Flask during the Shardbearer Mog boss fight will render his broken ass attack completely void and ineffective, so this could be just the key you need in order to defeat him that you've been looking for. Defeating this boss will reward you with a hard-earned trophy. Good job! And lastly, what you can do in the western part of the mountaintop of Giants is you can make your way to this location on the map called Orgina Liturgical Town. Now here you will find a unique Evergowl that you can enter. However, unlike the usual Evergowls you've seen, this one doesn't actually have a boss fight. Instead, there will be four separate locations in the town that you will have to battle through to get to, and in these locations you will find four separate beacons that you can light up. Once you've lit all four, which by the way will prove quite difficult, so make sure you prepare accordingly, you will unlock the seal in town, and then you will have access to yet another sending gate at the top of the stairway in this location. Using this gate will finally transport you to the much sought after and secret area of the Halleck Tree, so congrats on finding that for yourself. Now you will want to make your way down the path of the Halleck Tree. Eventually, once you travel far enough through the area, you will encounter the boss Loretta, Knight of the Halleck Tree. Defeating this boss will yield yet another trophy and grant you access to the way forward, so this is necessary for the Platinum. Once you've defeated this boss, you will be granted access to the next big location called El Fail, and there will be a few very important items you can gather for yourself in this location. The first of which will be your final legendary Ashen Remains called Clean Rot Knight Finlay. You can find these Ashen Remains inside of a room right next to a visible landmark a pagoda in the center of the small plaza. Defeat the enemies guarding this treasure, and you will be able to claim it for yourself, and that will be the last Ashen Remain you needed for the trophy. Now, once you've reached the Elphael Inner Wall site of Grace, you can backtrack from here to a ladder nearby that you can descend. 
Now, there's going to be some pretty nasty enemies down here that will attack you along the path. I couldn't be bothered, so I just ran past them. At the very end of this pathway, you will find a door that requires stone sword keys to open. Opening this door and making your way to the loot inside will reward you with your next legendary talisman, which is going to be the Marika's Sword Seal. Next up, once you've made your way to the drainage channel side of Grace, then make your way forward along the path following the roots of the tree until you reach a nearby rooftop with a broken opening. Dropping down into this building, you will be granted access to your next legendary talisman that we've been pursuing called the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. This is also clearly one of the best talismans in the game, and if you're anything like me, you're not going to be removing this one anytime soon, so enjoy that. And lastly, but certainly not least, making your way all the way down to the very bottom of the Halleck Tree, you will discover the next big boss battle in the game with Shardbearer Melania. It's also worth noting that this is easily the most difficult boss fight in the entire game, so you will need a shit ton of practice, as well as experience, and most importantly, you will need runes to make overcoming this boss fight possible. Not only does she drain your life upon each and every hit you come into contact with, but once you manage to defeat her, she has a second transformation where she gets bigger and badder. I wish you the very best of luck on this fight, because it's not an easy one by any means, and this fight took me many many tries, so don't let my footage here fool you into thinking that she's easy, because she's anything but. Now once you've eventually defeated Melania, or if you'd rather put a pin in her and try your hand at facing her again at another time, you can then make your way to the southeasternmost point on the map in the mountaintop of the Giants. Upon your arrival, you will be greeted with your next big story boss fight, the Fire Giant. Defeating this boss will grant you access to the next big area of the game, which is also going to be the final map to uncover, Crumbling Faramazula. Now when you first arrive here, you will notice that you cannot fast travel. Now don't panic, this is supposed to happen. Just make your way through the area, and once you reach your first site of grace available to you, you will be able to fast travel once again, giving you your freedom to do whatever you like next. It is now at this point that you should return to Deep Root Depths, if you haven't done so already, because this area is going to have some important stuff that we need. For example, when you first arrive in this area, you can climb the nearby tree roots and follow the path through a cave filled with giant ants. Reaching the end of this not very expansive cave, you will happen upon your final legendary incantation needed for the trophy called Elden Stars, and with any luck, if you follow the guide thus far, that will be the final legendary spell we needed for the trophy, so good job accomplishing that. Now you're going to want to continue making your way through deep root depths. Traveling through the ruins upward, using the tree roots to elevate yourself until you reach the Across the Roots Site of Grace. Once you've made your way here, you only need to travel a little bit further to reach your next boss fight. You will be challenged by five of Fia's champions, and you must defeat them all consecutively in order to progress. Once you've done this, you can now speak with Fia. Now the next few steps here are very important. If you choose the wrong dialogue choices, you could potentially lock yourself out of the next boss fight for the entire playthrough, thus making this boss highly missable. So whatever you do, follow these next steps to the letter. You'll want to pick the dialogue options, No, I want to be held, and then you will want to select the option, Talk in secret, twice. Just keep choosing this option until she exhausts her dialogue and she has nothing new to say. Then you will be given the option to give her the Curse Mark of Death. Once you've done this, you will ensure that you are able to challenge the next boss fight. Then you will have to fast travel away from her location, and then return to her and talk to her. Keep doing this, and speaking with her each time, until she will eventually appear to be dead upon your following visit. Interact with her body to be given the option to enter the deathbed dream. Doing so, you will finally be greeted with your next boss fight, Lich Dragon Fortisax. Defeating this boss will reward you with yet another hard-earned and highly missable trophy, so well done accomplishing that. Now once you've done this, you can fast travel back to Faramazula and continue progressing in this area until you reach your next location. 
Pharaoh Missoula has three boss fights in total, two of which are mandatory, and one of them is optional. It's worth mentioning once again that once you've defeated the boss here named Malekith the Black Blade, the legendary armament the Bolt of Grand Sax, which can be found in the Royal Capital, will become unavailable once this boss has been defeated. So this is just a reminder to go ahead and loot that weapon for yourself if you haven't already. You can also find your next legendary talisman in Faramazula. Starting from the Beside the Great Bridge Site of Grace, make your way opposite of the Malekith boss fight and follow this path forward. Doing so will not only cause you to be invaded by Bernal if you haven't killed him prior to this moment, thus allowing you to obtain the Devourer's Scepter legendary armament, but you can also loot the legendary talisman, Old Lord's Talisman, at the end of this path, and that's going to be your next one. And lastly, in Faramazula, you can access another optional boss fight that is very well hidden in this area. Starting from the Beside the Great Bridge Site of Grace, you will want to backtrack down the elevator and make your way outside the building that's full of enemies and approach the side of this cliff here. Doing so, you will barely be able to see a hidden pathway that you can drop down to. At the very end of this path, there will be an empty grave site that you can lay down and rest in. Doing this will teleport you to the boss fight itself, against the optional boss Dragon Lord Placidusax, whom also has the greatest name in the game. Now, this fight can prove somewhat challenging, so it's worth mentioning that if you want to summon other players to help you with this fight, you can summon people just before resting in the grave and warping, so you'll want to wait there for any summon signs if need be. Defeating this boss will reward you with yet another trophy. Now, once you've defeated Malekith and you've finished exploring Faramazula to your heart's content, you can now return to the royal capital and you will notice that it's changed quite a bit. This is normal once you've progressed the story thus far. You will want to warp to the Forbidden Lands East side of Grace, just outside the Royal Capital, and backtrack towards the capital from this direction. Once you take the final elevator down, you will see several putrid tree spirits roaming around in the ruins of the capital. You'll have to make your way down to where they are, and on top of some rubble, you will find your final legendary talisman in the game called the Erd Tree's Favor, and that's going to be the last talisman you need for the trophy. Now, the only other trophy that you might be missing by this point would be the trophy to fully upgrade a weapon. Now, it would honestly shock me if you haven't been able to achieve this by this point on your own, but in case you still haven't done it, I will show you the locations of where to loot every single Somberstone Miner's Bell Bearing necessary to purchase every material grade you will need to fully upgrade a weapon. The first Somberstone Bell Bearing can be found in the Celia Crystal Tunnel, located in Kaelid. It will be rewarded to you for defeating the boss in this location. The second Bell Bearing can be found in the Altus Tunnel, which of course is found in the Altus Plateau. It will be rewarded to you for defeating the boss in this location. The third Bell Bearing can be found at the First Church of Merica, located in the mountaintop of Giants. You will find it on a corpse just outside of the church itself, so go ahead and loot it. The fourth bell bearing can be found in the crumbling Fera Missoula at the tempest-facing balcony site of Grace. You will find it literally right next to the Grace on a nearby corpse, so go ahead and loot that. And the fifth and final bell bearing can also be found in crumbling Fera Missoula. You could get to it the quickest from the Beside the Great Bridge site of Grace. Simply backtrack down the elevator and into the room with the three beast enemies. It will be on a corpse closest to the center of the room. And now, with all five Somberstone bell bearings, all you will need is the highest grade of Somberstone. You could get one very easily in the mountaintop of Giants at the Apostate Derelict location. If you followed my guide thus far, then you would have started Latena's questline, so you should have her Ashen Remains on you already. Simply approach the enormous sleeping woman and summon Latena. Doing this will finish her questline, and you will be rewarded with the highest grade of Somberstone. And with this, you can now fully upgrade any weapon you desire that requires Somberstones to upgrade. Give all of your bell bearings that you recently acquired to the Twin Maiden Husks at the Round Table Hold, 
and purchase any grade of somber stone you require, and you will be able to fully upgrade a weapon, thus getting you the trophy. So good job on that one. And now that we've collected every single legendary item, as well as defeated every single optional boss, the only thing to do now will be to beat the game and get the three different endings in one playthrough. We could do this by backing up our save file, but first we will need to defeat the final boss. Now, the final boss battle actually consists of two fights back to back. The first fight is against Radagon, and there's an extremely cheese way to defeat him very easily. Now, this might get patched out of the game at some point if it hasn't already by the time you're watching this video, but in case this does still work, in order to pull this off, you will need the Cerulean Hidden Tier for your Wondrous Physic, which allows you to never run out of FP upon use. You could find this item closest to the Road of Iniquity Site of Grace, over in Mount Gelmir. From here, make your way down the hill towards the Minor Earth Tree and defeat the boss here. Doing so will reward you with the item you need for the strategy to work. Once you have the tier in your mix, you simply run up to Radagon as soon as the boss fight begins and stay close to his right side. If you do this fast enough, and you've done it correctly, before his turning animation finishes, he will simply stand there and do nothing. Once you see this, you could drink your Physic and use the spell Comet Azure on him to kill him for free without him retaliating. If you don't have the spell, refer to the timestamp earlier in the video for its location. Next up, you will have to fight the Elden Beast, and there's no guaranteed cheese strap for him that I'm aware of anyway, so you will have to fight him fairly, but at least you will have all of your flasks since we killed Radagon for free. The only piece of advice I could give you for this boss that might not be incredibly obvious is that he does have a weak spot on his belly, and if you hit it, you will deal more damage to him. Once you defeat the Elden Beast, you will be teleported back to the room where you first fought Radagon, and you will see Marika's body just ahead of you. Do not interact with her body yet, or the blue soul sign next to it. This is the exact moment where you will want to back up your save file, and I will be showing you how to do that on screen right now, in case you've never done it before. So first you go to Settings, and then you go to Save Data and Game App Settings. I'm playing on PS5, so my save file will be there. You click on Console Storage, and then upload your Elden Ring save data to the cloud. Now when we finish the game and get the trophy for an ending, we could just overwrite our file on the console with the save file we just uploaded to the cloud, and this is how we get all three endings in one playthrough. The first ending we're going to get is going to be the Age of Stars ending. Simply interact with the blue soul sign on the floor to summon our friend Rani, and this will trigger her unique ending. After the cutscene, the trophy will pop. The next ending we're going to get once we've backed up our save file is going to be the Frenzied Flame ending. Now is when we're going to want to teleport back to the Frenzied Flame prescription side of Grace. Now you will want to remove all of your clothes and armor, and then interact with the strange door at the end of the hall. Doing this will make it so that, once you interact with Marika's body after viewing the cutscene, you will be guaranteed to receive the Frenzied Flame ending. After the ending cutscene is finished, you will get your trophy. And now we're going to back up our save file from the cloud one final time in order to grab the standard ending. Simply interact with Marika's body, and not the blue soul sign, and you will finish the game and get the Elden Lord ending. The trophy for this one will pop after the cutscene finishes. And with that, that is going to be every single trophy in Elden Ring, and now you should finally have that sweet, sweet platinum trophy! Thank you guys so much for watching this video, I truly hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course hit that notification bell to support me. And I would really appreciate that, it would help a lot. And just a reminder, if you want to keep up with me and my content, consider joining the live streams here on my channel every week. We love to see new faces. And of course, for more guides and trophy-related content, be sure to check out the Path to Platinum playlist over on my channel, as well as any other videos that might interest you. Anyways, with that, I'm out. Take it easy, have a good one, everyone, and I will definitely see you in the next one!